I am actually talking about a vanishing wildlife, uh, a tragic tale and more importantly, can there be a turnaround? A young boy that uh, was going to be a mahout at the age of six to seven years with uh, our family elephant and then went on to become a veterinarian, elephant veterinarian, a chosen topic against uh, many other better professions. I have become a veterinarian and uh, veterinarian of elephants in particular. So it has been almost 40 years that uh, I am looking after elephant. Now whenever I go to different forum and I feel like I am representing the elephant and that way I have started looking uh, at the earth through the eyes of the elephant. Like what the elephants are feeling, what have we made our art, can the elephants live in this? So elephants see this and this is what uh, have we made uh, like you know our art today. Can elephants or anything survive here? So whenever I uh, go and see, speak in different occasions, I speak this topic. Now see, in 1804 there were 1 billion people and in less than 200 years, in 222, we have 8 billion. Now we can imagine what uh, this exploding population can uh, affect the planet, we have just one. And see, uh, because the whether it is the elephant or uh, like any other wild animal or human being, we need space. And when we need space, it is a competition for space. The elephants need space, the human being needs space. Now, human being, being the most intelligent creature, we decide. What do you decide? We decide to clear the forest, we decide to burn our forest and like occupy the land that was supposed to be uh, belonging to the wildlife and elephants for that matter. So here, you see, talking about elephant, I use it as a metaphor. I talk about the entire ecosystem, entire environment, what we have made of this. So here you can see uh, the high slopes of Nagaland. So these are the areas where uh, the mother nature has nurtured the forest for uh, thousands of years. What we have done today, the uh, tribal people, they do uh, the shifting cultivation. So when the population was less, the uh, cycles were every uh, say 15 years. Now the cycle has come down to three years. So we don't give the uh, planet the breathing space to regenerate. So our requirements are high. So we are burning, so we can see the uh, last forest of Madagascar being vanished in Indonesia. So you go everywhere, it is the same story. So according to the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change, so agriculture is the overwhelming direct cause of deforestation. Why agriculture? Because as I said, sustenance, we have to survive. So for sustenance farming, we damage the forest up to 48%. Then the commercial agriculture 32 percent, logging 14 percent and fuel wood uh, 5 percent. So in this situation actually uh, very rapidly we are destroying the climate and uh, destroying the forest. So uh, you can see what uh, the last uh, you know uh, from Borneo and Sumatra last batch of forest that we have burned and exported. So uh, I was also working in Indonesia, of course, for elephants and what I have seen there. So from the sky, it looked very green. But as you get closer, what you see is uh, all palm oil because the natural forests have been destroyed and the palm oil have been planted. So the, uh, the total biodiversity uh, is gone. And as a result, uh, today, you, see, you hardly see birds, you hardly see any insects. So that is the situation. So in this situation, many of the species have become extinct. So the Mexican grizzly bear, so you have also uh, like 
the other all species like dodo, dodo is a pointer that is in Mauritius. So, what happens? This is a story that every child should know because by losing dodo, we have actually understood that the importance of an individual species in the entire system of environment because the very important uh, commercial tree of uh, Mauritius have uh, stopped growing because of the lack of dodo because the dodo is to uh, do the uh, digestion of the seeds and the seeds is to grow. So, the species extinction is going on, but in last 100 years from 1900 to 2000, we have seen a very steep rise of the species uh, in the rate of species extinction up to almost 1000 species we have lost. Now, uh, it should remind us that we are actually leading to a very critical situation. I remember from my childhood, uh, many of the species that we have seen in our childhood, like for example, the uh, fireflies, when we at night in villages, when we walk, even in the darkness, we didn't need any torchlight because the fireflies were lighting uh, the roads. Today, not a single is to be seen anywhere. So, not only that, there are many other species that has gone and uh, you will be surprised to know uh, that the honeybee that we commonly see, uh, it is said that if honeybees goes within uh, four to five years, the human population will also vanish because of lack of pollination, nothing, there will be no crop, we have never thought about it. So, because of the over exploitation, rising temperature of the climate because of deforestation, and excessive carbon sequestration or uh, what we call our carbon footprint that we are living. Actually, we have made uh, our planet like this. So, the forest fires are there. Uh, our students have shown forest fires. So, why forest fires? Because the climate is becoming dry, lack of rain in most of the uh, areas and the rising temperature has caused the forest fires and forest fire is again adding to the temperature of the planet. Now, this is a, a very popularly seen pictures. So, it is a, uh, it's a metaphor like the animal is holding on to the last uh, part of the ice which is melting. So, actually this is going to be the fate of the human race. So, we are working in uh, what is called a razor's age. So, that uh, maybe uh, within a few years, so, I am showing the third pole of the planet, that is Tibet. So, you will be surprised, Tibet is the origin of uh, nine major rivers of the uh, Asian subcontinent and uh, besides many other small rivers. So, if from the west, so you can see from Tibet, all the major rivers uh, like uh, Sutles, Rabi, then Ganga, uh, Brahmaputra, then uh, the Iravati, Yellow River, Yangzhou River, Mekong, all these rivers are coming and they are feeding two-thirds of the Asian uh, subcontinent with water. Now, what is happening in Tibet actually affects all of us because of the climate change, because of the global warming. Actually, the glaciers are retreating to the tune of already we have lost 57 percent of the glaciers in Tibet. So, <coughs> the scientists say that within another 15 years, all the glaciers will be vanished. So, all the rivers will become dry. Can you imagine what will happen to the two-third population of Asia? So, where we are actually heading, that is why and in this situation, where the species will survive? And the scientists, uh, they have said that in Indian subcontinent, we need at least 33 percent forest cover, but in reality, we have only 13 percent now. Remember, one third what we actually need and now scientists say that if biodiversity is to be maintained that there has to be uh, at least 40 percent forest cover and uh, we are just in a very, uh, very bad situation. So far as the biodiversity is concerned, forest cover is concerned. So, this what I am showing is a canopy forest where a very rare uh, monkey species, golden langur in western Assam used to live. Now, this was, this was a canopy so that the monkey can move from one tree to another and today you see the advancing human population and this is the story of 
every other place. So that, uh, you know, they, uh, people are converting forest land for uh, human settlement, tea plantation, various other plantations. So, uh, you know, the, that is why the conflict. Now, the, where do the elephants go? They have to come to their territory. What uh, was their territory five years back or uh, six years back? Now, people have occupied all those areas. Elephants come to those areas and there is conflict. And see, these are, the human population is growing. The main problem is there. We do not like to address that. We do not like to speak that. But the main problem is the human population explosion. And because of the growing population, we need more railways within, uh, we need more of the uh, like estates and all that where elephants are electrocuted or elephants uh, or other animals. Now this picture looks beautiful, isn't it? A herd of elephant inside a tea garden looks very green. But actually what is the reality? Do you know how much pesticide and weedicides are used in the tea plantations? And not a single blade of grass is there, not a drop of water to drink. And the, the biology of the elephant is such that what they eat passes as stool in six to eight hours. So those elephants that having no other habitat, they come to these areas and they stay whole day. And by evening, they become like tsunamis because of hunger. And they go to villages, they go to farmlands, they break houses and they damage uh, properties and farms and trying to protect uh, the uh, like the pro their properties and farms, the people get killed and there is retaliatory killing. So in Assam alone, we lose at least 100 elephants per year to various kinds of retaliatory killing as well as 50 human beings because of the conflict with elephant. So uh, besides elephant, there are other species which are also into conflict. Now leopards, leopard they have been there. Now, in every places where uh, leopards or other wildlife exist, people have gone in. And so, because of that, the conflict is there. You can see leopards, the forest people trying to tranquilize uh, are getting attacked by the leopard. And people are also becoming so hostile, wherever possible. See, tigers actually, or leopards, uh, people do not know that they move at night from one habitat to another. Tiger reserves are like that. Now, uh, suppose in the, uh, it, day, it breaks day and somewhere it becomes day and the tiger decides to uh, hide for the day. Somebody uh, sees that and starts attacking and uh, see, uh, the animals also retaliate and uh, they come destroy our orchards and other properties. Now people try to protect themselves, they become hostile. What I talk about Indian subcontinent, particularly India where elephants are considered as incarnation of Lord Ganesha. So we think that, you know, the, they will not be hostile, but people are. Now they have all these uh, things that they try to protect their land and uh, properties by driving the elephants. We drive elephants using kunkis. So uh, again, my story, this, uh, there is one behavior of elephant called must which makes the elephant very hostile. So in course of my practice, I have learned how to tranquilize remote injection, use of uh, technology. This has become the mainstay today uh, in managing the human elephant conflict. So you see, we uh, go, these are kunkis, the monitor elephants that can take us to the habitat uh, where the elephants are there. So this is a wild elephant. Very recently, we have radio collared just to monitor the movement of the elephant hearts so that we can take precautionary measures or preemptive measures. So uh, this is one such elephant that we have captured uh, because of must. Uh, rhino, right in the Guwahati city, rhino has come. So uh, if we don't use the technology, we have to kill the rhino because a rhino is a very powerful animal, it can kill. Uh, so rhino translocation program that we carry out. So far we have translocated 50 rhinos uh, from different parts to Manas National Park, where because of anthropogenic regions, uh, the rhino population was wiped out. Radio coloring of elephant, next. So various the radio coloring, then monitoring so that we can uh, judge. 
and this is also use of technology like one particular elephant has become killer we have the technology we can tranquilize we can lift and translocate uh, lift the animal and translocate to other areas besides that there are various other techniques by which we can actually uh, protect the uh, properties then biofences various types of biofences we use for protecting the elephant this is a biofence that is actually very profitable the power fencing so lots of technology we are using uh, for keeping the elephants then uh, through elephant kaleidoscope we realize that if we protect nature nature will also protect us nature protects if she is protected so uh, thank you very much